معرض في 2012 العرابة المدفونة ده كان وائل حاصل على جائزة الارنست شيرينج اوورد وده اللي كان جزء منه منحة لفعل عمل جديد واللي هو بدأ السيريز بتاع العرابة المدفونة واللي هو هيتكلموا عليه وائل شوقي وسوزانا بفافا كانت وقتها الكيوريتر في القيمة الفنية في الكونس داركة وهي حاليا مديرة متحف الفريتيانوم في كاسل وأنا مش هطول عليكم بس أحب أرحب بكل من الأستاذة هايكا كاترينا مارتنز من مؤسسة الأرنس شيرينج معي النهاردة وأحب أرحب بالأستاذة سوزانا بفافر مديرة مديرة متحف الفريتيانوم والقيمة للمعرض العرب المدفونة في 2012 والقائمة برضو على الكتاب اللي احنا بنحتفل بيه النهاردة وطبعا احب ارحب بترحيب يعني عظيم جدا بوائل شوي اللي جالنا مخصوص من فينيسيا وقطع شغله على المشروع الجديد كابريت مسير الجزء الثالث اللي احنا برضو ممكن نبقى نتكلم فيه فاحب ارحب بيهم وساعدوني ان انا ارحب بيهم عشان اقدر اترجم الجزء الثاني So, a very quick introduction. I won't be very long. Um, I would just like to a bit warm welcome uh, to to everybody who's here today, um, particularly uh, for the occasion of the book launch uh, uh, and the project of Al Arab Al Madfuna by Wael Shawi. Um, to many of you, Wael is a, is a known artist born in Alexandria. He's contributed greatly to the, Egypt, to the Egyptian art scene and also internationally through his uh, very various projects. He's also a, a, a dear friend and colleague, and I forgot to mention in Arabic, I'll come back to that with Mass Alexandria, um, a school for young artists. Um, where it was recipient of the Ernst Charing Award in uh, 2012, 2011. Um, uh, upon which there was the exhibition uh, award at the Kunstwerke in uh, Berlin. And at the time, uh, Susanne Pfeffer was the curator uh, at the Kunstwerke and was curator of the show and also of the project contributing greatly to the editorial conception of uh, the book, which also is his first monograph. And, uh, and the award also uh, in, was the beginning of uh, this, the new series of works called Al Arab Al Madfuna, which Susanna and Wael will uh, speak about uh, following the film. Um, so I would like to really like with a warm welcome to everybody, like Heike Mert, uh, Katrina Mertens from the Ernst Sharing Foundation, and Susanna Pfeffer, now uh, the director of the Museum Friedrichsianum in Kassel and Wael Shawi for interrupting his production schedule on the third part of Cabaret Crusades and joining us all the way from Venice just for the weekend. Um, I will pass the word briefly to, uh, to, Heike, uh, to Heike and uh, after that we will uh, uh, watch the 22-minute film Al Arab Al Madfuna Part 1 uh, dated 2012 before moving into conversation and opening up uh, to questions. So thank you very much for bearing with me in two languages. Yeah, thanks a lot for the introduction. I like to welcome all of you on behalf of the Sharing Foundation. I, it's a very uh, great pleasure for me to be here today. The idea actually was um, after having the show of Wal Shawi in uh, Berlin in 2002, um, regarding to the art award he got, um, making a book presentation in Berlin too, and then I thought, well, this might not be the right place because um, it's much more interesting to like having the book lounge here in Cairo to present it to you as an audience, which is very close to the place where uh, Al Araba Al Matfuna is at, because that is a small village in Upper Egypt and uh, it's a story about storytelling, about the spirit of this country and the influences of uh, Shalam and uh, Shaikhs um, influencing the people to do different things uh, in terms of history and this is something that 
we deal a lot with in our foundation um, because the um, Ant Sharing Foundation is one that supports arts and sciences and we believe in arts as some uh, sort of a practice um, to produce knowledge. And yeah, sure. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to ask you to ask me 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 to مكان العرب المدفونة أقرب ليكو بكتير من ما هو أقرب لينا و... وبس كنت أحب أردو أعرف كلمتين عن مؤسسة الآن شيرين مؤسسة الآن شيرين تهتم بالعلوم والفنون Yes, and, and our uh, main claim is to like bring arts and sciences together as the both parts that we really create and explore our world. And um, while Shawi is one of the most exciting artists in our time, to like on the one hand reflect the history that we all come from, because the uh, ex uh, experience-based knowledge is really a big part of our um, living and of our decisions, we can't really ignore it. This is one part and the other part is that what we learn during our lives by looking at things, by doing research and uh, by exploring ourselves and experiments. Um, we وبالنسبة لنا إحنا شايفين إنه وين شو من أهم الفنانين اللي إحنا بس عليهم النهاردة إنه هو نظرة خاصة لل للتاريخ وزي إن إحنا بنبص على التاريخ وكمان الطريقة اللي إحنا بن بنبص بيها أو بنتعلم بيها من ال من التجارب من ال من التجربة الفعلية. Yes, and I would just want to thank Wal Shawi again for coming here tonight, because for you it was the longest way, actually. Uh, your time schedule is so tight, so it's really an honor to have you here today. And um, thank you again, Sarah and Jens and Antonia, for your warm welcome here and for uh, making this book presentation possible. Um, and um, also i like to thank Susanna for coming here and having the talk again with Swael about the film. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that conversation again. Also, we had quite some few in Berlin too, but it's really always a great pleasure, pleasure to listen to you and to learn more about your work. So I hope you enjoy the film and have a nice evening. Uh, ووقته ضيق جدا وان هو معانا النهارده ده احنا حاجه مبسوطين بيها جدا وحابب برضو اشكر ساره ويانس وانتونيا لترحيبهم الدافئ واحب طبعا اشكر سوزان بفافا واتم ومبسوطه ان انا هيبقى في الحوار اللي هيقوم بيه وائل وسوزانا مع ان احنا عملنا كذا حوار في برلين بس مختلف ان احنا نبقى بندير الحوار هنا و
اختلج صوت الجبارنة حزنا أشار إليهم جابر الكبير المسجي رامشا أن يجلسوا همس واحد باكيا أوصنا يا أبانا فظل جابر الكبير ممعنا وصامتا أسرع واحد فجمع أعوادا في حزمة واحدة ليذكرهم بأن الاتحاد قوة فظل جابر الكبير ممعنا وصامتا It took us more than a year to work on this catalog <laughs> because we somehow had the crazy idea to do the catalog in English and Arabic. And um, yeah, I think, yeah, that's the catalog. And somehow it came also out that Lael, on the first meeting with a graphic designer, say he really want to do a big catalog. And I never thought it was going to be so big, but it became really big. And I just want to take this opportunity because this is our first. Uh, Yeah, our, this is your first catalog and this is the first book presentation. Uh, first of all, to really to thank uh, Heike Katharina Mertens, who supported us for the, whole, um, for the whole time. And also thank you really much, Heike, for your patience, because uh, I think we all wanted to be done in three months and then took more than a year. And uh, I think it was a lot of work. And, Um, I really want to thank you, uh, Nina Tavasomi, who is also here because she was working on the catalog for the whole year and never lost her energies in putting it in, uh, in the process. And I also would like to thank, uh, um, you know, several people also from Cario helped us to produce this catalog. First of all, Sarah, who wrote a really great text for the catalog, as well as Nina Tavasomi wrote a text. and. Um, I'm a little bit afraid of my tron, you know, pronunciation. Also, Mohamed um, Abdallah um, helped us a lot with the Arabic, and uh, Mohamed Saleh, who both helped us pretty much. And um, and uh, yeah, besides the graphic designer Lambel Homburger, also EPS 51 helped us to put everything uh, in the catalog in Arabic. Okay, I think that's it from the official part. <laughs> I think it's fine. And um, uh, yeah, maybe uh, we start quite basically. But um, um, this was the first story you came up with uh, Mohamed Mustagab. I'm, I'm still so uh, unsure how much he's it's like everybody knows him here, how much he's known in Egypt, and why did you choose especially him for doing a film project on his stories? First of all, thank you so much for this beautiful night. And I really appreciate that you're patient enough to see this film. It was really, I, I felt that it's a bit long because I usually see these films in, in installation context. And for me to see it as screening, this is a bit <laughs> heavy. <laughs> thank you. Um, okay, so um, Muhammad Mustajab, I think uh, I, was, I was always fascinated by his, his short stories felt that he's very, very special. He's uh, mixing between two worlds, worlds that I, I'm, I'm always um, interested in, which is how he mixed between metaphysics, all this metaphysical world that it's really uh, sort of mm, mythical and magical world, and also to connect between this and our uh, daily uh, routine life. And uh, yeah, it was. I think it came clear to me when I I had experience ten years ago, in when I was invited with a friend of mine to visit uh, a small village in Upper Egypt called Al Arab Al Madfuna. Um, so when I went to this village, I experienced people who are trying to dig to f to find pharaonic treasures. And I think this is part of the, of the Upper Egypt uh, culture. This is something really known. Uh, Muhammad Mustajab is also from Upper Egypt. By the way, he dead, he's dead like I think eight or nine years ago. Um, but 
the idea came after that, like 11 years after when I decided to, to work on this topic, I, I decided to translate my experience in Upper Egypt, in, in al Arab al Madfuna, and I thought the best is to use Muhammad Mustajab, not because only his, his type of, of, um, uh, of writing, because I find it extremely visual, but also because he's mixing between these two worlds. And my experience in Al-Arab al Madfuna is I was fascinated by, by this society that is trying to mix between metaphysics, really, they are using magic, uh, phrases from Quran, um, uh, ghosts, whatever, all, this, all, the, all the, the, the unseen uh, world for us. They're using this system in order for them to reach this materialistic system, which is, in the end, it's treasures. So, yeah, so that's why, the beginning. Al-Arab um, al-Madfuna عمل بيتكون من كذا جزء وده الجزء الأول منه وانت شغال أو خلصت مخلص قريب الجزء الثاني منه هي والمشروع كله مقتبس من أعمال الكاتب محمد مستجاب. أم فكنت عايزاك تحكي لنا أكتر يمكن على فكرة العمل المسلسل اللي هو العرابة المدفونة مش بس الجزء الأول بس كمان التجربة بتاعتك في الجزء الثاني اللي احنا مش هنشوفه النهاردة وكمان برضو فكرة أهمية القصة لمحمد مستجاب في العمل ده تحديدا وعامة علاقتك بالنص uh, okay, uh, Muhammad Mustagab in his belly. Fikrit. I goes it there. A woman in the Fikra Tat, the Kusa Masan, the Lahan Faragan, the Kusit is there is Zainana Bashuf, the Nafs of Kusa, the Ribbon, but it had Denny. Zain Mahna Shufna, the film there, Fi Fikrit. إنه الكبير بتاع القبيلة بيموت والقبيلة بتتجمع حوالين الكبير ده وبيسألوه إن هو يدينهم وصية فأول وصية ليهم كانت إنه يقتنوا جمل فهم كانوا نجع المفروض إنه معتاد على تربية الحمير وبعدين لما شافوا بقى إن الوصية دي جاية من الكبير قبل ما يموت فتبنوا الفكرة وبدأوا يستغنوا عن الحمير بالكامل وبدأت الحياة كلها تتحول إلى الجمال وبعدين الكبير اللي بعديه بيموت وبيدي لهم وصية تانية فالوصية التانية بتكون إنهم يقتنوا بغل وهكذا الفكرة بتاعة التكرار دي نفسها بالنسبة لي يعني مهمة جدا لأن فيها كمان فكرة إن محمد مستجاب في القصة بيبين إزاي إن المجتمع ده نفسه أو القبيلة دي نفسها مع تبنيهم لفكرة الحيوان ده بيبتدي أجسامهم نفسها فيزيكلي تتحول لشيء شبيه بالحيوان اللي هم بيقتنوه فلما بيكون عندهم جمال مثلا بيبتدي الرقاب بتاعتهم يعني تبقى أطول والعينين تبقى جاحظة وحاجات كده الفكرة بقى بتاعت الفيلم اللي بعده اللي حصل هنا نحن متفرج على على قصتين في نفس الوقت قصة مرئية فيها الاكسبيرينس بتاعتي أنا جوا القرية دي لما أنا كنت قاعد استضافوني في القرية دي فكنا قاعدين في مكان زي المضيفة maybe it's important to 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 explain this in English as well but yeah بس أح يعني I can say this in Arabic first then so the فكرة هنا إن إن لما اتعزمت في ال القرية دي كنا قاعدين جوا مكان هو أوضة مغلقة وهو ده اللي تقريبا أنا حاولت أعمل فيه الفيلم بعد كده الأوضة دي بيبقى فيها ناس كانت لمدة حوالي عشرة أيام كانوا بيجوا يعني بس يرحبوا بينا وكان فيه في وسط الأوضة دي حفرة والحفرة دي الناس بتحفر فيها عشان فيها سرداب المفروض بيحاولوا يوصلوا فيه لحجرة الملك يعني اللي هي لأن القرية دي كلها بتقع في مكان قريب من مكان اسمه أزوريون اللي هم بيعتقدوا إن هو المكان بتاع عبادة الإله أزوريس على فكرة المفروض برضو إن إن القرية دي نفسها كانت في يوم من الأيام عاصمة مصر وهي طبعاً مكان بسيط جداً يعني حدش يتخيل يعني 
Okay, yeah, go ahead. Um, just because this is an important note, uh, where it was just explaining that the that the film has basically uh, like it's it's two layers of a story. <laughs> the the narrated story is the one from the short story from Muhammad Mustaqib, but what you see visually is actually uh, based on the memory of his own experience in this uh, in uh, this village in Upper Egypt, and what he, as he remembers that he was uh, invited into a room. Uh, where like uh, there were like many people sitting and there was a, a hole that was being dug under which there was a, they thought they would find a sarcophagus um, and it's close to uh, the, 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 the temple of Osiron mm -hmm. um, and uh, the idea is basically that they think that if people are digging to find something um, and so there are two there are these then two layers to the film one that is based on the visual story of his memory and the other one, which is this appropriated uh, literary text um, that tells of a story which, in brief, if you came late or weren't able to follow, um, is, is simply of, of a group of uh, people whose uh, the wise man tells them to buy a camel, and then they do, and they, although they live in a valley, and they start taking on the characteristics of the camel, their eyes start to bulge and so on. And then there's a repetition in the story where um, he tells them to buy a donkey, for, yeah, a donkey, <laughs> a mule, sorry, a mule, and then um, and then the same thing starts happening, and it ends in the very end with him, him telling them to buy a pig. Okay. So the idea here is that the the story happens like that so that this is the experience of my own القريه دي الفكره بتاعت ان في نظامين بيشتغلوا في نفس الوقت النظام الميتافيزيقي ده اللي انا مش شايفه الناس اللي بتشتغل طول الوقت التمائم وسحر وقران وحاجات من دي على اساس ان دي قوه يعني ما احنا مش مش شايفينها لكن الغرض الاساسي من كل اللي بيحصل ده لمده سنين ان هو في الاخر يطلع كنز مادي من الارض فالفكرة بتاعت العالمين اللي ماشيين مع بعض دول هو ده الفكرة الأساسية اللي أنا كنت بحاول أشتغل بيها، فاللي حاصل جوه الفيلم إن أنا بتفرج تقريباً على قصة وفي نفس الوقت بسمع قصة مختلفة تماماً، بتفرج على طفل وفي نفس الوقت بسمع صوت بتاع راجل كبير، وده كمان برضو فكرة الراجل الكبير دي جاية من فكرة ال ال إن إن حصل كتير طبعاً وإحنا جوه القرية دي كان كانوا بي كان في تجارب بتاعت ناس بيشفوهم من المس الشيطاني والكلام اللي بيقولوه ده فكتير من ضمن التجارب دي قدامنا كان فيها اطفال والاطفال دي المفروض ان هم بيتكلموا بصوت رجاله يعني فده ده اللي جاب الفكره But I think it's interesting about two things. The one thing is that I think you just explain how much people are yeah, <coughs> trying to use different ideas or to also metaphysic to find these treasures. And on the other hand, also how much somebody, like in the story itself of uh, Mustagab, is, um, yeah, is leading people to follow really one idea and really to stick to this idea to such extent um, that they really even look like cameras or they behave like moors and also this uh, absurdity of ending how much uh, like one person or one idea really can uh, transform a whole society. And I think this is also in a certain way um, maybe also linked to maybe a little bit stronger link to this uh, area in Upper Egypt also where people have a lot of different kind of beliefs and mix them up. Maybe you'd like to tell a little bit about these connections. Uh, yeah, or maybe, you know, just I think in this maybe also the connection, maybe it's not too abstract, but I think the one who have seen um, the, the films of Crusades is also about this, like, this idea of going to Jerusalem mm -hmm. and fight for you know one idea to follow this for decades and a lot of people died mm -hmm. because following one idea and I think this uh, story of Mustagab, um, yeah, it's, it's like a parable who um, shows how misleading or how funny or even idiotic yes. 
it can be to follow one idea until to a certain extent. Yeah, yeah. I think f uh, in uh, I'm really really interested in the idea of uh, of capturing uh, a society in, in transition, a society that is trying to move from one system to another, and uh, and that I think I try to work on this a lot. Um, uh, how a society is is uh, basically a Bedouin nomads is hoping or trying to be agricultural society or an agricultural society is trying to move to be an ur urban society and I think also this is this is part of this uh, it's part of this series um, but maybe I also would um, would like to say that that a reason for for using kids, for example, in this series, is to first to, to avoid as much as I can the idea of, of acting skills because I, I I I like not to use the skills of the actor. I don't want to depend on the skills of the actor. I would like to always use the the text and the topic itself that become the the main the main key. And the other thing is also the idea about the gender. Although this is completely male society, but maybe in the second part of, of Al Arab al Madfuna we see more men, women, uh, because, because I, I, I try to split the film into two parts. One part is my experience inside the house where, we, where people were digging to try to find the treasures, and the other film is mainly my experience outside the house in the village where we'll be walking between uh, the, the agricultural land and the mountain and, and all of that and that's that's uh, another film. Um, I don't know if this is really answering. So I think since the audience seems to be clustering more and more at the back as well, um, I think you know, um, I'm also ha quite happy to open it up to uh, questions. Thank you. Um, actually, well, I would be really happy if you would continue to talk about the, the children, the use of the children in the film, which is the most striking kind of device, let's say. Um, because the, 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 the non-using of acting skills is also common to this work in the Cabaret Crusades. Um, because you could still work with non-professional actors, so you know I kind of want to push you on the point of children and why that. Thank you. Maybe for, okay, very quickly. I think that the, uh, the, the first experience uh, with with the kids in my my work, I, I think started in two thousand three, when I was invited to to Venice Biennial. That was uh, a piece uh, called Asphalt Quarter. Um, and the, okay, the, what what happened that I was reading uh, a novel by Abdul Rahman Munif, he's a Saudi Iraqi novelist, and he, the first chapter of the novel was explaining the idea of uh, uh, a Bedouin society, very very uh, simple society that lived by the sea, and he's of course explaining the, the establishment and uh, emerging of Saudi Arabia. Um, and then the British oil companies started to arrive to this village by the sea uh, to build oil platforms. And they started to work with the local community, the, these people in the, 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 that we were, most of them were using in, uh, in, in fishing, actually. So what, what happened that um, they did not speak the language, they didn't speak English, but they, they started to work with them in building the oil platforms. So they kept working for about four years without knowing even what they're doing. And that was, of course, a very, very interesting idea, that the idea that they were building, they didn't even know that they are building their own future. But that was, yes, that was the, the beginning of Saudi Arabia from the, the, the vision of, of Abdurrahman Munif. So I decided to translate this, this experience by going to the Western Desert in Egypt, and I went to the families. I asked for for their kids to be to participate in a project with us, 
and I, I told the kids that we need to, to build, uh, to construct an asphalt runway for an aeroplane in the desert. And we have to finish this in one day. And that's it. The kids believed it, and they made this. And we documented the, the whole production. And that's it. That was the, the, the video installation, actually. Uh, but from this moment, I think it was very important since, uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the idea of this transforming societies. Most of these topics are very complicated, and I don't want to add <coughs> complexity, like gender complexity, for example, to it. I don't like the idea about man, woman, to be part of this. So most of, this, most of the time when you look at kids, you look at this a society without adding this gender layer. And also the idea of the acting, of course, the acting skills is extremely important. When I made a Telemach Sadat, for example, working with kids, it was very important to me to translate this idea to work with kids that don't have our historic dramatic um, uh, history, that, that we don't, they don't know really who Sadat is, and they don't know anything about this assassination. So they're just following what I'm really telling them, to jump from this truck to walk from here to here, and that was the, 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 main, the main point of this uh, uh, film that uh, really gives the, um, the, the action itself, the, or, or the, the, the assassination uh, topic itself, its uh, heaviness. Um, وان هو كان برضه بيفكر بالكتاب بتاع عبد الرحمن منيف مدير الملح وفي والعمل بتاع مثلا كاباري كروسيد انت برضه قائم على على نص تاريخي تاني اللي هو بتاع الحروب الصليبيه كما يراها العرب بس في المشروع الجديد بتاعك انت بدات تخش في نصوص ادبيه مش تاريخيه ودي تعتبر اختلاف انا شايف او يعني اختلاف في الاتجاه للريفرنسز بتاعتك فهل دي حاجه انت بتعملها ب ب يعني بوعي او كونشسنس يعني كونشسلي ولا دي حاجه مجرد حصلت بالصدفه مثلا او يعني انا بس عايزه اعرف على مدار الاعمال بتاعتك من 2003 لحد 2014 اختلاف الابروتش بتاعك في في علاقتك انت بالاعمال اللي انت بتعملها وال والنصوص اللي كانت تاريخيه او نصوص ادبيه في الفتره الاخيره <تصفيق> لدرجه كبيره يعني انا بشتغل على على مشاريع مختلفه حاليا مثلا يعني اقدر اقول ان هم الحاجات الاساسيه اللي انا بشتغل عليها دلوقتي هم ثلاث مشاريع مشروع اسمه كباريه الحروب الصليبيه مشروع ثاني هو الاعراب المدفونه ومشروع ثالث اسمه اقوال ديكتمز كابر كروسيدز عند الاعراب المدفونه اه اوكي ف ال الحقيقه في انا اعتقد ان كل كل مشروع ليه اللغه بتاعته الخاصه مشروع بتاع كباريه الحروب الصليبيه هو بيعني اكثر مش بفكره التاريخ نفسها بس بيعني بفكره تصوراتنا احنا او فكره كتابه التاريخ نفسها فبيتكلم عن ازاي احنا بنكتب التاريخ وازاي احنا بنشوف التاريخ المكتوب ودرجه تصديقنا احنا في التاريخ المكتوب كمان فعشان كده يمكن جزء من الشغل بتاعي في مثلا في في مشروع زي كبريه الحروب الصليبيه بحاول على قد ما اقدر ان انا ما اغيرش ولا حرف في الـ الـ التاريخ اللي جاي مثلا من حد زي اسامه بن منقذ او ابن كثير او ابن جبير آه الناس اللي هي اصلا احنا واخدين منها الكوتس واخدين منها الجمل بتاعه الفيلم فبحاول ان انا ما اغيرش فيها اي حاجه اعتقد ان جزء من محاولتي ان انا ابقى يعني دقيق جدا في نقل كل حرف مكتوب هو نوع من النقد الفكر تصدقنا اصلا في هذا الـ الـ في, الـ في, الـ في النوع ده من, من, من التاريخ يعني آه حاجه ثانيه مثلا زي آه العرابه المدفونه هي فيلم انا اعتقد ان النص الادبي جاب بالتحديد علشان فكره 
التجربه بتاعتي نفسها في الصعيد وفكره الحاله الاسطوريه دي ما بين زي ما قلت الحاله الميتافيزيقيه والحاله الماديه الملموسه. ازاي 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 ان في عالمين ما لهمش اي علاقه ببعض في نفس الوقت عايشين مع بعض تماما لو اكيد في اكيد مننا ناس كتير جدا راح قرى كتير جدا في الصعيد يعني هيلاقي ان الاطفال عادي جدا عندها ال ال الكلام ده بالنسبه لها مش كلام مرعب ولا خرافه ولا بتاع ده كلام جزء من حياتها اليوميه يعني ف اعتقد ان ده كان برضو بالنسبه لي مهم من فكره النوع ده من الادب نفسه بتاع محمد مستجاب انه انه مرتبط تماما بالقصه دي ال ال المشروع الثالث اللي هو مشروع اقوال برضو مشروع خاص جدا هو مرتبط بالاساس ب هو الحقيقه مش مرتبط بالادب ولا حاجه هو مرتبط مرتبط بايه؟ هو بدا بفكره الكريتوريال ديسكورس بفكره ال بفكره ال النص اسمه ايه ده بقى القيمي؟ النص الايه؟ يعني ال مرتبط بفكره ازاي ان ممكن يبقى في مؤسسه فنيه وبتكتب مثلا منشور صحفي يعني اه 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 يعني اقرب مثلا لان احنا نتعامل مع فكره الكتابه اللي جايه من الكيوريتورز خلينا نتكلم كده الكتابه اللي جايه من الكيوريتورز تحديدا خلاص على ان دي برضو نص نتعامل معاه لان هو نص مقدس كنوع من كنوع من مش محاولة النقد اللي ده بس محاولة التحليل لفكرة المؤسسة الفنية والجمهور، يعني إيه جمهور؟ يعني إيه مؤسسة فنية؟ يعني إيه لما يكون في بنالي مثلاً يوم يجي البنالي يقول إحنا بنحاول نكسر الحواجز ما بين الفن المعاصر والجمهور المحلي، فيبقى في الحالة دي أنا بحاول أفهم بقى من 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 البروجكت بتاع ديكتمز ده أو أقوال يعني هل فعلا هو النص ده اللي بيطلع الكيوريتور يتكلم فيه هو فعلا بيحاول يكسر بيه العلاقه دي ولا العلاقه دي علاقه اليت لدرجه ما يعني هو ده اللي بحاول اعمله يعني هحاول اترجم ضمنيا وصلح لي لو في حاجه غلط ماشي اوكي I'll try to give a, just a concise uh, translation and I will uh, correct my mistakes so the question I was addressing had to do with, uh, I was referring to uh, that over the course of his practice, over the last 11 years, um, in uh, several of his works, he would make references uh, to uh, texts, and uh, often they would be uh, non-literary texts, or like non-fiction texts, either like historical, mostly historical accounts, like in the case of like Abdurrahman Munif, or in the case of uh, the Crusades through Arab eyes. Um, and Wael's response was uh, like uh, responding through uh, three specific projects. Um, the first project, it, which uh, actually precedes, uh, or sort of precedes and exceeds uh, this one, which is a project called Cabaret Crusades. It's a, a, a three-part uh, project of, of also films and other works. And uh, the Cabaret Crusades, in Cabaret Crusades, um, it is a film that is staging uh, uh, marionettes and is staging very specific durations uh, of the Crusader Wars. And uh, in that film, also the, the, the actual uh, the voiceover, the, or the, the sort of script, is uh, very much uh, uh, cited in, in its original form as it was spoken by uh, like, uh, people like, Ibn Kathir, like historians like Ibn Kathir and others. And uh, and that is because uh, for for, for Weil, he believes that uh, by uh, making this sort of application in this way, um, there is also a sort of questioning of how we uh, uh, you know how we perceive uh, history or how we absorb history and uh, maybe take it for granted. And there is a so there is kind of an inherent critique in uh, these sort of like two layers of forms between the visual like and the sort of staging of the marionettes and then the like uh, the, the almost verbatim quoted uh, like material from the historical accounts and then the second project he was speaking about um, is uh, in the case of al-arab al-madfuna which we also saw the first part of um, 
the, the, he believes that the text or, uh, has the two, layer, the, the two layers of experience, the metaphysical and the material, uh, which corresponds also to uh, his experience and his perception uh, of uh, his, his time uh, there many years ago and also pointing to how, for example, uh, children there would not necessarily be freaked out by, uh, you know, by these sort of two uh, systems that are at play, that, you know, for example, there is like magic being uh, performed in order to uh, dig out something at the same time, you know, things have their material everyday like function. He also brought into the discussion, which complicates things further, um, that this is my edition, uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, a recent work that was uh, also commissioned at the Sharjah Art Foundation, uh, which is called the uh, Dictums 10-120. Um, and in that work, he also deals with a very different kind of text, namely that he takes the, uh, the starting point of that, the curatorial text and the press releases and the material uh, from the curators and the biennial foundation, in this case the Sharjah Minale Foundation, um, as, uh, as a as source material that then is uh, workshopped and evolved <laughs> until it is uh, in its end form, and I will spare you the details for time's sake, uh, into a very uh, beautiful uh, song uh, or poem in Urdu that is a song from ex that become kind of excerpts of the actual curatorial text. So he has very different approaches to working with these texts, be they historical, uh, literary, uh, or functional, such as curatorial and press releases in the most recent project. I hope I... Okay, um, should we take one more or a few more questions if there are any uh, thoughts, desires? Any questions? Yeah. Uh, I just, I guess, I wanted to ask about two things: the choice to do to work in series, which is something that, like a series of videos or films, um, and and in the, I guess specifically in relationship to this project. And then the other one is um, these kinds of intercut. Um, scenes of traveling along the Nile and which remind me of a lot of things visually so I was kind of wondering what specifically you were had in mind with those scenes. <coughs> Just because it's clear I'll translate. Um, Claire is asking, uh, as always, putting questions. One about uh, why we uh, what, uh, uh, long, wrong, wrong language. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, Claire cannot but this L. Then she can show a muhim for matter. Give me this L. Li wa el bishtagal fi tas fi amal musalsala. والسؤال الثاني بالنسبة للفيلم ده في في لقطات كثيرة للنيل بتفكرها بلقطات يعني باللغة مرئية يعني موجودة فكان دي اختيار للغة دي في الفيلم ده. So. Um, okay, first, I, okay, um, why series? Okay, I mean, I, I don't think it's, it's. for example, when I started Cabaret Crusades, I really did not know that it would be a series. But, I've, but, when, but the problem that it's, um, to start Cabaret Crusades, I was, I decided just to start to read about it. And the first thing was like really uh, striking for me is the idea of the speech by Pope Urban II. That he gave a speech in France, in Clermont, France, in 1095. And then I read that this speech was not even documented during the speech. And it was documented after. I don't know even if this is correct, but this is what I read anyway. And for the moment, we have four different versions of the same speech. So that was really, really connected to the idea of 
of this writing history. I mean, it's supposedly one of the most important historical speeches that led into almost 200 years of the Crusades history. But at the same time, this was not even documented. So the idea is to include this historical speech in the film was the main, the main thing for me. It started from this. So that was the beginning that made the first film of Cabaret Crusades. But in the end, this film was about half an hour that was almost covering four years, only four years of the Crusades history. So that's why it becomes clear once I finish the film, even before I show it, that it will have to continue because it's never satisfying. It does not really tell exactly the experience. And I think this is the same situation here because I was trying to translate my experience in, in this 10 years ago. Um, but yes, of course, it's always, I feel in the end that it's, it's, it's sort of an element and that it's not really telling the whole, the whole thing. That's why I decided in the second film to, to show my experience in Al Arab Al Madfuna, but outside this, this room, because I also lived in this village, but outside. And I feel that this is really, really important, and it's very connected, because, it, because even outside this village, nobody, of course, is digging or anything, but there is the concept of rumors, for example. So I decided to take one of Muhammad Mustajab's uh, novels, actually I used this time two novels, and to put it in, in, in a shape of spreading rumors in a in village. So groups of kids are going to another group of kids and they're telling them something and one of them go to another group and, and so on. It's like just continuing this type of stories. And I think victims also became the same after finishing this. في كابري كروسيدز أنا بدأت كنت مهتمة بالقصة بتاعة البابا إيربن التاني إيربن التاني بالبابا إيربن التاني واللي هي موجود منها أربع قصص يعني أربع قصص أو نصوص مختلفة تاريخية مش متفق عليها يعني فبدأت 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 ايه؟ اقول بصراحة الله وإن وطبعا قال لهم ان انتوا ليكوا الجنة وليكوا وكل حاجة ماشي كويس بس الفكرة هنا انه اللي كان بالنسبة لي اهم من كل الكلام ده ان انا قريت ان ان الخطبة دي ما كانتش ما تسجلتش ما ما تعملهاش توثيق وقت ما اتقالت بس عملها توثيق بعد ما اتقالت بعد ما خلصت بسنة مثلا ولا حاجة فبقى عندنا النهاردة أربع نسخ مختلفة من نفس الخطبة دي اللي هي بتعتبر واحدة من أهم الخطب التاريخية اللي أدت ل 200 سنة تقريبا بعديها من الحروب الصليبية بس فده الفكرة كمان؟ أنا مش فاكر أوكي طيب والجزء الثاني كان بيتكلم على العرب على العرب المدفونة أوكي فالفكرة هنا إنه أربع الفكرة هنا أنا لقيت إن الفيلم ده في الآخر غطى أربع سنين بس من تاريخ يصل لحوالي 200 سنة فأكيد بعد ما خلصت الفيلم اللي هو تقريبا كان بالنسبة لي أهم شيء فيه هو ترجمة فكرة الخطبة نفسها بتاعت البابا أرباني الثاني اللي حصل هنا أن أنا تقريبا بعد ما خلصت الفيلم كنت أكيد عارف أن أنا لازم في فيلم تاني تالت عشان يقدر يغطي الأوجه بتاعة الهيستوري ده يعني وفي جزء العرب المدفونة كنت بتحكي ان انت علشان تجربتك مع العرب المدفونة مش كانت بس جوه المكان ده مع الناس دول بس كمان كان في تجربة اللي هي برا واللي هي قائمة على انه فكرة الاشاعات والاشاعات اللي هي بتنتشر حوالين المدينة اللي هي اللي بقى فيها الحال يومية العادية فالفيلم الثاني واخد قصتين من كتاب محمد مستجاب وبيحاول برضو انه هو يترجم فكرة الاشاعات إلى العمل. 
the, okay, the second film, the, the second film of Al Arab al Madfuna, uh, they, they, uh, I used. So, so clear. I, is this okay? <laughs> okay, I just. The second film of Al Arab al Madfuna, I'm dealing with a, with a story by Muhammad <coughs> uh called Nights Adore Perfumes. And the other one called uh, Al Purbam, uh, The Offering. Um, one of the stories speaks about uh, a village that lost its ability to speak completely and they became co completely mute. And the second story speaks about a queen that decides to kill her husband after four days. And when the son of this husband tries to come and to take a revenge, she accepts to have sort of negotiation with him. Then she marries the son. And then she kills the son after another four days. And when the, and, and so on. So she kills all the family basically with the same. And every time actually the, the, the village believe that this will be the solution, the new solution. I will refrain from translating. Um, okay, I will take the opportunity uh, to, although, and I will note that, but we will not answer it, where it has not answered why there are long shots of the Nile. It, <laughs> um, I will take the opportunity to, uh, to invite you all for some mandarins and sandwiches and uh, juice and drinks and to relax and to have an opportunity to address all your other questions to uh, we're in, in person. He's lovely to talk to and he's also not on stage. So thank you very much and I will really thank you very much Shewail, for coming thank all the way from so Venice. Um, I will say that this has been a great opportunity for us since uh, Wael's last solo show in Egypt has been quite a while ago in 2009. And with that, I hope that this is an omen that we will have another solo show of his work hopefully soon in Egypt. And uh, I really thank Suzanne and Fefa like, for making this all happen. Um, <laughs> and also, she has many other questions. And I would like to thank yeah, Nina and Heike and everybody else who's made that happen, including Jens, Antonia, and obviously myself. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy your evening.